Krishna. Merry Christmas, everyone, in case you didn't know. It. I didn't bring out everywhere else to get some. Canto 2, Chapter 7, Text 8. This six. was her idea. It ain't the kind of thing I do. Scheduled incarnations with specific functions. We shall see if Santa Claus is in this list of scheduled incarnations. If not, he's not real. Isn't it? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Alright, text 8 Being insulted by sharp words spoken by the co-wife of the king Even in his presence, Prince Druva, though only a boy, took to severe penances in the forest and the Lord, being satisfied by his prayer, awarded him the Druva planet, which is worshipped by great sages, both upward and downward. <laughs> Baba, when he was only five years old, Prince Druva, a great devotee and the son of Maharaj Uttanapad, was sitting on the lap of his father. His stepmother did not like the king's patting her stepson, so she dragged him out, saying that he could not claim to sit on the lap of the king, because he was not born out of her womb. The little boy felt insulted by this act of his stepmother, nor did his father make any protest, for he was too attached to his second wife. After this incident, Prince Druva went to his own mother and complained. His real mother also could not take any step against this insulting behaviour, and so she wept. Mm. The boy inquired from his mother how he could sit on the royal throne of his father and the poor queen replied that only the Lord could help him. The boy inquired where the Lord could be seen and the queen replied that it is said that the Lord is sometimes seen by great sages in the <coughs> dense forest. Mm. The child prince decided to go into the forest to perform severe penances in order to achieve his objective. Prince Druva performed a stringent type of penance under the instruction of his spiritual master, Sri Narada Muni, who was specifically deputed for this purpose by the personality of Godhead. Prince Druva was initiated by Narada into chanting the hymn composed of 18 letters, namely, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And Lord Vasudev incarnated himself as Prishni Garba, the personality of Godhead with four hands, and awarded the prince a specific planet above the seven stars. Prince Druva, after achieving success in his undertakings, saw the Lord face to face, and he was satisfied that all his needs were fulfilled. The planet awarded to Prince Druva Maharaj is a fixed Vaikuntha planet installed in the material atmosphere by the will of the Supreme Lord Vasudev. This planet, although within the material world, will not be annihilated at the time of devastation, but will remain fixed in its place. And because it is a Vaikuntha planet, never to be annihilated, it is worshipped even by the denizens of the seven stars situated below the Druva planet as well as by the planets which are even above the Druva planet. Maharishi Brigu's planet is situated above the Druva planet. Hmm, that's interesting because I didn't know that there was another planet situated above Druva Loka. Or, I guess that Druva Loka is a, a um, Vaikuntha planet, exactly. That's mm. pretty interesting. So the Lord incarnated himself as Prishni Garba just to satisfy a pure devotee of the Lord. And Prince Druva achieved this perfection simply by chanting the hymn mentioned above. After being initiated by another pure devotee, Narada, a serious personality can thus achieve the highest perfection of meeting the Lord and attain his objective simply by being guided by a pure devotee who automatically approaches by dent of one's serious determination to meet the Lord by all means. The description of Prince Druva's activities 
can be read in detail in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm. Text 9. Maharaj Vena went astray from the path of righteousness and the Brahmanas chastised him by the thunderbolt curse. By this king, Vena was burnt with his good deeds and opulence and was en route to hell. The Lord, by his causeless mercy, descended as his son by the name of Prithu, delivered the condemned king Vena from hell and exploited the earth by drawing all kinds of crops as produce. Hmm. Interesting. Pro -pro. According to the system of Anashram Dham, the pious and learned Brahmanas were the natural guardians of society. The Brahmanas, by their learned labour of love, would instruct the administrator kings how to rule the country in complete righteousness, and thus the process would go on as a perfect welfare state. The kings or the Kshatriya administrators would always consult the council of learned Brahmanas. They were never autocratic monarchs. Scriptures that the Manu Samhita and other authorised books of the great sages were guiding principles for ruling the subjects and there was no need for less intelligent persons to manufacture a code of law in the name of democracy. The less intelligent mass of people have very little knowledge of their own welfare as a child has very little knowledge of its future well-being. The experienced father guides the innocent child towards the path of progress. And the childlike mass of people need similar guidance. The standard welfare codes are already there in the Manu Samhita and other Vedic <coughs> literatures. The learned Brahmanas would advise the king in terms of those standard books of knowledge and with reference to the particular situation of time and place. Such Brahmanas were not paid servants of the king and therefore they had the strength to dictate to the king on the principles of the scriptures. This system continued even up to the time of Maharaj Chandra Gupta and the Brahmana Chanakya was his unpaid prime minister. So, uh, obviously, Varnashram being discussed here in the principle that the Brahmanas uh, would guide the Kshatriyas with knowledge and information from the Manu Samhita, uh, but also important that the Brahmanas were not paid, so they weren't on the, the kind of uh, payroll of the kings which means if they didn't give good guidance, they might get sacked. And that's a really important point because it means that then the Brahmanas were able to give guidance and advice that was free from motivation other than to speak the, the truth, other than to speak the knowledge and wisdom that's come from the, from the Manu Samhita or from the Vedas and to direct them accordingly. But they weren't compromised. That's the word I was looking for. They weren't compromised their integrity wasn't compromised by the fact that they were being paid or they were out to get money, so like that. Mm. Maharaj Vena did not adhere to this principle of ruling, and he disobeyed the learned Brahmanas. The broad-minded Brahmanas were not self-interested, but looked to the interest of complete welfare for all the subjects. They wanted to chastise King Vena for his misconduct and so prayed to the Almighty Lord as well as cursed the king. So, yeah, yeah. if the Brahmanas are giving you instructions, it behooves you to follow them. Mm. Long life, obedience, good reputation, righteousness, prospects of being promoted to higher planets, and blessings of great personalities are all vanquished simply by disobedience to a great soul. Wow. Mm. One should strictly try to follow in the footsteps of great souls. Maharaj Vena became a king, undoubtedly due to his past deeds of righteousness. But because he willing, willfully neglected the great souls, he was punished by the loss of all the above-mentioned acquisitions. In the Vamana Purana, the history of Maharaj Vena and his degradation <coughs> is fully described. When Maharaj Prithu heard about the hellish conditions of his father, Vena, who was suffering from leprosy in the family of a Malecha, he at once brought the former king to Kurukshetra for his purification and relieved him of all sufferings. Wow. I don't remember that um, in the, the Pasam Prithu and King Vena's fourth canto. Mm. And um, I think it's the fourth canto, right? Yeah. And uh, <coughs> yeah, I don't remember that part. That's interesting. <laughs> 
Hare Christmas. <laughs> I mean, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Maharaj Prithu. Maharaj Prithu, the incarnation of God, descended by the prayer of the Brahmanas to rectify the disorders on earth. He preceded all kinds, sorry, he produced all kinds of crops. But at the same time, he performed the duty of a son who delivers his father from hellish conditions. The word putra means one who delivers from hell, called put. That is a worthy son. <clears throat> <clears throat> Text 10. The Lord appeared as the son of Sudevi, the wife of King Nabi, and was known as Rishabdev. He performed materialistic yoga to equibalance the mind. This stage is also accepted as the highest perfectional situation of liberation, wherein one is situated in oneself and is completely satisfied. Mm. Pop, pop. Out of many types of mystic performances for self-realization, the process of Jada Yoga is also one accepted by authorities. This Jada Yoga involves practicing becoming like a dumb stone and not being affected by material reactions. Just as a stone is indifferent to all kinds of attacks and re-attacks re of external situations, similarly one practices Jada Yoga by tolerating voluntary infliction of pain upon the material body. <laughs> Such yogis, out of many self-infliction methods, practice plucking out the hairs on their heads without shaving and without any instrumental help. <clears throat> but the real purpose of such Jad yoga practice is to get free from all material affection and to be completely situated in the self. At the last stage of his life, Emperor Rishadev wandered like a da oh, dumb. Dumb, a dumb madman, <laughs> unaffected by all kinds of bodily mistreatment. Seeing him like a madman, wandering naked with long hair and a long beard, less intelligent children and men in the street used to spit on him and urinate on his body. There's no need for that, is there? That's quite extreme. <laughs> He used to lie in his own stool and never move. Oh. But his stool was aromatic like fragrant flowers. <laughs> and a saintly person would recognise him as a Paramahamsa, one in the highest state of human perfection. Mm. One who is not able to make his stool fragrant should not, however, imitate Emperor Rishabdev. Well, there you go. Mm. <laughs> the test. The practice of Jad Yoga was possible for Rishabdev and others on the same level of perfection, but such an uncommon practice is impossible for an ordinary man. <clears throat> the real purpose of Jada Yoga, as mentioned here in this verse, is Prashanta Karana, or subduing the senses. The whole process of yoga, under whatever heading it may be, is to control the unbridled material senses and thus prepare oneself for self-realization. So that's what yoga really is all about, controlling the unbridled senses. In this age, specifically, this jada yoga cannot be of any practical value. But on the other hand, the practice of bhakti yoga is feasible because it is just suitable for the, this age. The simple method of hearing from the right source. Sorry. The simple method of hearing from the right source, Srimad Bhagavatam, will lead one to the highest perfectional stage of yoga. Rishabdev was the son of King Nabi and the grandson of King Agnidra, Agnidra, Agnidra. And he was the father of King Bharat, after whose name the planet Earth was called. Bharat Varsh. Rishabdev's mother was also known as Marudevi, although her name is mentioned here as Sudevi. It is sometimes proposed that Sudevi was another wife of King Nabi, but since King Rishabdev is mentioned elsewhere as the son of Marudevi, it is clear that Marudevi and Sudevi are the same person under different names. Interesting. Hmm. 
Texas. There you go. There you have it. Text 11. The Lord appeared as the High Griva incarnation in a sacrifice performed by me. That's Lord Brahma. He is the personified sacrifices and the hue of his body is golden. He is the personified Vedas as well and the super soul of all demigods. When he breathed, all the sweet sounds of the Vedic hymns came out of his nostrils. See, like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pop -pop. The Vedic hymns are generally meant for sacrifices performed by fruitive workers who want to satisfy the demigods to achieve their fruitive results. But the Lord is the personified sacrifices and personified Vedic hymns. Therefore, one who is directly a devotee of the Lord is a person who has automatically both served the purposes of sacrifices and pleased the demigods. The devotees of the Lord may not perform any sacrifice or may not please the demigods as per Vedic injunctions. And still the devotees are on a higher level than the fruitive workers or the worshippers of different demigods. So what did you get out of that purport? Anything stood out to you? No. <clears throat> so the position of a devotee is even higher than a Vedic Brahmana um, who worships the demigods perfectly with mantras. So basically becoming a devotee of Krishna is much higher than even, even that of a, of a Brahmana. That's clearly explained. Yeah. Okay, so maybe this will be the last one. Okay. Uh, text number 12. At the end of the millennium, the would-be Vaivashwata Manu of the name Satyavrat would see that the Lord in the fish incarnation is the shelter of all kinds of living entities up to those in the earthly planets. Because of my fear of the vast water at the end of the millennium, the Vedas come out of my, out of my Lord Brahma's mouth, and the Lord enjoys those vast waters and protects the Vedas. Purport. During one day of Brahma, there are fourteen Manus, and at the end of each Manu, there is a devastation up to the earthly planets, and the vast water is fearful even to Brahma. So, in the beginning of the would-be Vaivashwata Manu, such devastation would be seen by him. There would be many other incidents also, such as the killing of the famous Shankashura. This foretelling is by the past experience of Brahmaji, who knew that in the fearful devastating scene, the Vedas would come out of his mouth but the Lord in his fish incarnation not only would save all living entities, namely the demigods, animals, and men, and great sages, but would also save the Vedas. Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki. So, uh, depending on when you're watching this, it's either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. And uh, we just wanted to thank everyone who uh, participated in the Prabhupada Transcendental Book Distribution Marathon. Um, uh, the Gita Jayanti is on Friday, which is either today, if you're watching this, uh, or uh, tomorrow, if you're watching right now. That may be confusing, <laughs> but, <laughs> but like that. So, um... Uh, we hope you have a wonderful Gita Jayanti. Thank everyone who participated in the uh, marathon to distribute books. Um, we still have books and the marathon will continue um, forever and ever. Amen. So anyone who's interested, please get in touch. And uh, please, everybody, have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. <laughs>